Welcome to the Ape Talks. As always, this is your host, Mr. Ape, and I hope you enjoy the 56th installment of me talking to someone else. So, Judith, what did you think of the documentary? Of the documentary? Um, it was pretty good, actually, because it um, it made me think about stuff. Yeah. What kind of stuff? I actually didn't know that there were so many cases of um, domestic violence against male persons. I, I really didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. To me, the, mo the craziest thing was... Uh, like the difference in genders mm -hmm. versus the difference in, in race in the American justice system when it comes to the way you get treated. So like a black man and a white man, if they both commit the exact same crime, the black man is statistically more likely to get like 10% on average longer sentences. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to men and women, mm -hmm. uh, if a man and a woman both commit the exact same crime, the man is going to get 60% more like time mm -hmm. in his sentence. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like that was actually really surprising for me, and I like. Um, but I still would need to <laughs> get into the research if it's right. I didn't do that. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of differences between men and women that, like, uh, today we're trying to ignore. You know, like uh, for example, if you ask most women what what do they want out of male partner you know let's do this let's play a game mm -hmm. okay let's do this so let's pretend me and you are on a date okay like we both have some interest in each other and we're sitting having a conversation let's say you have a perfect guy in front of you well what characteristics traits certain income like body height and all that stuff would you want or expect for him to be like the perfect guy to your standards uh preferences um i think uh this person should be like able to 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 talk about different stuff like conversations are um, an important part but um also not feeling superior to other people i really that's really important for me that you're like on the eye level with any person hmm. yeah and if i don't feel like uh this guy i would be on a date with um doesn't do that then he's not the guy for me i think like how are you treating the waitress or the mm -hmm. waiter you know exactly or customer service agents in general I always like like to play games with them when I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like every time I order food, and they they here they always tell you that your address, and I'm like, wow, are you a CIA agent? You know, how do you know all my information? <laughs> okay, so let's say I was the perfect guy. Let's say I was really good at conversations, and I was just like this perfect guy, for example's sake, to those standards. Now, what would you think you would have to bring to the table in order to like earn a guy like that? Do you think me? Um just being myself <laughs> what does that mean like you have to give me like uh things i can say you know what i mean huh so i don't know like um i would do like i would treat him the same way and i would like i think one trait which is really important for me um is to be honest to be open to be able to talk about anything there should be no um no taboos hmm. and also not these games between male and female people like for example the bill game i don't like that and i also don't think that uh the other person on the table or at the table would appreciate that hmm? to me I, i'm not gonna lie i kind of like it when i'm at a restaurant and everyone's mm -hmm. fighting for the bill because it shows how not like pretending to fight mm -hmm. like really they do want to pay mm -hmm. the bill because when i'm around a bunch of guys and they're doing that i feel like wow these guys you know are generous where I'm like, in, let's say I'm in Europe and like everyone is like calculating the exact mm, cent. True. Okay, you owe this much. I need actually one more cent from you, please. You know, I don't know. It doesn't feel like uh, that comfortable. True. You know? That's also annoying, but that's like, yeah, maybe the culture there mm. to be like really equal. I, I mean, I like, I also don't like that, that you would count it for like each cent. And like, I don't care if like the person then just pays five dollars more or something because it's like next time I'll go. So, yeah. Yeah. Like you said earlier, we were, when we were discussing, it's always good to like never be on the extreme of any mm -hmm. end. It's, it's exactly. great to be to be balanced. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's a bit here, sometimes a bit, a bit to that side. Mm -hmm. And th this kind of leads me to my next question. OK, so what do you think uh, most men uh, look for in a woman? when it comes to like having a serious relationship with them. What, what, do you, what do you think most men, like today we're gonna be doing a lot of generalizing by the way, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. so I hope you're okay <laughs> with that. I'll try to. <laughs> okay, so from that perspective, uh, like let's say you're a guy, what do you think most guys look for in a woman? 
in the end it would be like to have a, a partner or a person you can rely on i think that's important yeah for sure like um like the physical thing is also really important i would not deny that not, neither for me um but i think uh, in the end it's about like having a, a partner or a person you can rely on you can trust you can also share stuff you would not share with another person hmm Maybe. interesting yeah If you had to give me a few more traits. Hmm. Caretaking is really important. Um, What does that mean exactly? You know, if you have problems, you can talk to this person, but also like caring about maybe also daily business. <laughs> maybe it would be nice if uh, if the if the woman would also like wait for you sometimes if you come home, like this is really traditional. Um, yeah, what else? You tell me, maybe. Oh, <laughs> I'm okay. I've kind of like. Uh, ah, you. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, okay, so we, okay. we have a checklist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see which one is it. Okay, so most men, in my opinion, remember we're generalizing today. Mm -hmm. This is what they look for in a woman. Peace of mind is the first one. Mm -hmm. So even in the Quran, like I'm not very religious, but. I mean, I have friends who are, and they've like told me a lot about different religions, and I've taken notes, and and at least ex Islamically, like even the Quran states that like a woman should be someone who brings peace to mm -hmm. to, to your mind and to your home. I'm I'm misquoting terribly here, but something in, along those lines. But can in, I interrupt? Sure, sure. What? Why? Why should uh, the woman bring the um, peace? That's why a, shouldn't be like the peace? Why should not? Be you yourself the person who brings peace to your mind. Well, I think you should too. Mm. Definitely. I mean, mm. you should if you have some certain issues, you should work on yourself and try and be more calm. But uh, like long time ago, let's look at it uh, genetically. I mean, like the guy, the woman would all stay in like the tribe, mm -hmm. talking and cooking and shit and like taking care of the children, and the guys would have to go out like ca barely survive. Jack died today. Woo! But we caught some food finally, and then like. The last thing you want is like a headache, you know what I mean? In that mm -hmm. sense, where like, did you do that today? Why are you always na na na? Like, oh fuck, not this. I wish I was with Jack, you know. <laughs> so a piece is like really important uh, in terms of. Um, I'm not just mean nagging, but like someone where you can come home, like you mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. you feel comfortable. It's like a kind of safety because mm -hmm. when you're around a, a kind of girl who's like, if you say anything. It, It's on the verge of triggering an argument mm -hmm. or someone who takes himself too seriously in general, any human being. It's not pleasant, you know? So another thing would be loyalty. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's very important to men, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, men really care about, like, uh, the ability of a woman to be loyal. Yeah, yeah, that's maybe the thing I meant with uh, relying on the person. Reliability, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah reliability also in, in many other ways. Like, um, in terms of cooperation, that's mm -hmm. a big one, too. Mm -hmm. So you want a girl who like is not always. Why do you want to go there? Like, why not go here? Like, like you pick a restaurant. She's like more than happy to show up if she. Because obviously, if a girl likes you, she's gonna make it easy for you. If she mm -hmm. doesn't, she's gonna be like, "Ooh, I'm busy. Maybe mm -hmm. some other time." Nah, nah, nah. So cooperativeness is definitely a big one. Uh, feminine. You mm -hmm. like a lot of I. I think a lot of people today because we have such a big push now to mm -hmm. empower women and all that. I kind of like forgetting that men still like femininity in, in women just like how women like masculinity in men mm -hmm. so what what makes um, a woman feminine to you these things i think make women feminine like mm -hmm. being cooperative is very mm -hmm. feminine uh like let's say you have a woman who's like has a very uh, who's very educated and is very qualified and is a very high position job i know off the bat that woman is going to expect me like if she has an interest in me to have at least the same level of income as she does and she's going to I know I'm going to have to fight more because she had to fight to get to where she is. Mm -hmm. So I know she's going to be not as feminine as she, I would want her to be. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be more masculine in that sense. If that, like the characteristics I would gain from getting to that position, mm -hmm. that would make me masculine is what I'm talking about here. I think that's a really traditional way of thinking about men and women. Like I said, we're going to be the little, <laughs> a lot of generosity. <laughs> But yeah, it is. It is. I'm not going to lie, but. Like, there's a lot of traditions that are very important. I mean, that's what make cultures is traditions. Not all of them are terrible. And at the same time, sure, there is a lot that is wrong. And a lot of weird cultures around the world mm -hmm. that have really interesting traditions. And should I question them? I don't know. It's not my culture. I don't know. But there are some things that kind of do make sense from at least a biological point of view. And so I'm almost done here. 
Uh, the last one, uh, the last two I'd say is friendliness, because mm -hmm. like this is also very feminine. Like someone who's friendly, there's a smile, and there's always like a, kind of that safety aspect we've talked about. And finally, I'd say respect. Respect, I'd say, is one of the largest ones. But yeah, that's in my opinion what most men uh, want in a woman. That's interesting because I think we have a different uh, point of view on that because all the traits you were telling me, I would. Um, I would expect them from any person. But let's say you're working working in HR and you like want to hire a person. Mm -hmm. Like as a human being, when you're looking at another person as a potential dating partner, you kind of have to think about those things mm -hmm. in that sense. So like, yeah, these are great things to just vet normal people to even in your life. Yeah. I agree with you. And uh, which brings me to my next question. What do you think most women look for in a man? I actually think um, safety and also cooperation. Interesting. Yeah. Do you know what I have? <laughs> what? <laughs> Shoot. So excitement and mystery is a big one. Mystery? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Another one is safety. That's a big one. Like you want to know that the guy you're with is not going to put something in your drink or is not going to try and do something when you're alone with him mm -hmm. that you don't want him to do. And like also he's masculinity, which also is linked to safety in the sense that when you're around him, you know he's going to protect you if anything happens. Like there's that element of safety. And we're, like it's the reason like why women, in my opinion, like give you a lot of tests indirectly and without them even knowing it. Like mm -hmm. let's say me and you are talking and you ask me, Ramsey, what's your favorite ice cream? And I tell you, I don't know, vanilla. And you tell me, vanilla is terrible. I love chocolate. Most men, let's say I have a crush on you. In that mm -hmm. situation, most men would say, you know what? You're right. Chocolate is better. Mm -hmm. And th yeah, they would fail that test in that way because it would show it would almost be an instinctual sign that that man is going to run away with the rest of the crowd if some shit happens and leave you with the child all alone. So I know, like, nowadays we're not, like, in the middle of the jungle where the tiger's jumping on people and taking them out. I'm glad. But in general, uh, since we still are very connected to those aspects of ourselves, things mm -hmm. haven't changed. In, like, it's still such a short period of time. It, we haven't, like, evolved yet to adapt mm -hmm. to this. So we're still connected to that. Mm -hmm. So instinctually, women feel safer around people who have that masculine tendency. And another one I would say is like purpose. So women really, in my opinion, love a guy who has something that's more important than they are in their life, mm -hmm. that they put ahead of everything else. Like when a man has a certain direction in his life, I think women really like that. Yeah, I can actually relate to that. Really? It's really nice if a, if a person has something um, working on and like a purpose, as you said, that's um, like maybe some higher higher meaning of life not just go for work doing it because i don't know to earn money and then just sitting at home but like really being motivated for something like striving for something mm. that's actually really attractive yeah see what i mean <laughs> uh, oh yeah i don't know if i said that but for women to fit that's a big one mm -hmm. and uh yeah that's basically Reliability too, just like how you said mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of them are really similar, but yeah, just exactly. slightly tweaked. But yeah, what do you think of those answers? I mean, I said before, it's not about male or female, but uh, like people. the traits, yeah, it's for people I want to be around. Right. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something uh, earlier. You said you would want uh, your partner to be able to be vulnerable. The, the thing is, I don't think that should be the case in all situations. So like, for example, I would never cry in front of a woman that I Why love. Why not? It's really as simple as, to a certain degree, even though it sounds fucked up, it makes you look less masculine. Mm -hmm. And it does affect that to some degree. I mean, I've done that in the past, and I had a really good reason to cry. You know, like someone I love died. Mm -hmm. And it was in front of a girl who really liked me, and it does have some sort of effect. And like, in my opinion, like a guy should save that to like his close friends. Like if you want to cry, in my opinion, it's best to go do that like in the hands of a really good guy friend. Mm -hmm. Because um, I know this sounds terrible, but when you do that in front of a woman, in my opinion, she will judge you to a certain degree, even if it's subconscious. Because like I said, I, I still okay. don't think we haven't evolved to that point. Vulnerable in terms of honesty, I think is a great one. So you should be honest with all women and, and men and just with people in, in general. But yeah, like I think vulnerability, you always have to have some sort of like things in the back of your mind. Like don't do, don't, don't do this, don't do that. Okay, like I, I would disagree on that because um, I think it's important to 
um, like I personally like to talk about feelings, not just like, mm. um, but what do you think about that? What makes that with you? How do you feel about that? I think that's important to reach like a deeper point of connection and I really don't like the perspective about masculini masculin masculinity. Masculinity. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that this is still a thing that um, men should not cry in front of other people. I, I don't get it. Like as I said before, um, I don't. I don't want to divide that much between female and male persons. So why should a man not cry? I mean, I get your point, but I have a different view on that. When it comes to relationships, you know, like I said, we have to generalize and there are some mm. basic rules that work more than others. You know, I'm just going to make this quick point here because this is going to come up. Um, when it comes to generalizing, from a, just a technical perspective, marketing is professional generalizing, mm -hmm. right? And we know it works because people make money out of it. So there mm -hmm. is some th sort of truth in that. For example, if there's a pool of crocodiles over there, I tell you to listen, like 85% of people who've been through that pool mm. get really hurt. Like, yeah, but there's all that, is that 15%? I'm sure there is, but just from that perspective, do you want to go through that pool? If, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, true. Generalizing, uh, if, there, if the, there are exceptions, like, you know, and that's why generalizing shouldn't always be, like, applied to the letter in that sense. For sure, like, I'm, we're on the same page there. I mean, that's, like, how you survive. It, you need to categorize people or situations because it's, like... Um, Back then, as you said, with the with the crocodiles, for sure, it's like to save your life. But I think we we should be at the point that we we know that we generalize and we know that we categorize people or situations. But we should always open up to reflect on it mm. and to give maybe the person a chance and not like prejudice them. So mm -hmm. yeah. So like I get I get your point, but still I think we should always reflect on that and rethink it. You know, have you are you aware of the movie Titanic? <laughs> it's funny because uh, I talked about that with friends today. Really we were talking about Titanic, yes. Well, well, interesting. Life is a coincidence in yeah, so many ways. There's so many things. Um, but yeah, do you know that movie is the second most successful film in terms of money it's generated in history? Are you aware of that? No. Okay, let me ask you. Why do you think it is like the second most popular movie of all time? Because if I tell you what else is on that top 10 list, it's just like action movies like mm -hmm. Avatar and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Why Titanic, this romantic movie, do you think is number two? That's a good question. I mean, it's like a, it's a drama, like an iceberg, like the, 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 mm -hmm. the situation they're in. But yeah, for sure. Also because like, help me with the names, but... Jack, Rose and Rose. Jack and yeah. she like uh, she finds someone she actually has this guy from her class and then she finds this guy from from the subclass and falls in love with him and it's like just tra tragic and like he would die for her right yeah. exactly you hit it you hit it right on the fucking you hit the nail right on the head one theory I've really heard is it's because of Jack's sacrifice mm -hmm. there's even an interview like said like there's a part where I think it's the director or the writer of the script himself. Mm -hmm. They were saying like, Jack needs to die. Mm -hmm. if Jack doesn't die, the movie's fucked. And so that's one aspect is Jack sacrifices himself mm -hmm. for, for this woman. To live. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's really funny and ironic too is actually I saw the scene where he dies. She's like, I'll never let go of you, Jack. I'll never let go of you, Jack. And she's letting go of his hand as she's saying this and he just, <laughs> he just sinks. Anyway, uh, another thing is I think there's this female fantasy in the movie of where Rose tames the bad boy because mm -hmm. he, he kind of gets tamed because he's like mm -hmm. a b bad guy who's yeah, yeah, stuck into the ship, like, yeah. make, you know, doing bad things. And there's something very romantic, I believe, for women when it becomes extreme in the sense that a man is willing to die for a woman. I think women find that concept very romantic and very powerful. I think that is why. Mm hmm but shouldn't it be mutual like i i'm just thinking about it if i would be in rose's position like maybe it's what i want to think about myself that i would also do the same sacrifice because it's like the person i truly love and i would also die for him i don't know generally speaking when we look at the movie you know do you, uh, they when they were the ship was like when they knew it was fucked they were saying 
all the women and wo women and children first on the boat, and you guys can just you know enjoy your ride to death. The, the, like there has always been this thing. Even today, if you go on a cruise ship, is still the yeah. case. Still the case today. They will say that if anything happens. It's interesting because that was also a point in this documentary that they were talking about. Why is it still that uh, you would say women and children first? And we were actually talking about that today. Really? Uh, I think there's no point in it anymore, but maybe it's about like children for sure that should they should be rescued like at first. Uh, and then the person who normally takes care of, of the child. I have an interesting perspective on this. So I think that uh, men and women are different, like uh, in term when they're born, I think they're born of different value. So when, when a male and a female are both born, like a boy and a girl, I think in, automatically the woman is more is going to be more valuable than the boy. The difference is, as time goes on, uh, the boy, if he does the right things, if he takes care of himself, he has a direction, he stays away from the bad guys, and uh, learns to be healthy and find his purpose and all that shit, he doesn't become like worth a shoe, which is the value he's born. If he doesn't, obviously, he's just worth it, worthless. So he has to build himself up. And the woman is born uh, worth her body weight in gold, but she has to preserve that value. But why, like, if we look at ourselves, really, like, the most basic meaning, I've read a lot of books about meaning and life and stuff, but the most basic meaning to animals is to reproc like, to mm -hmm. breed, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. That's why women are always more def more defensive about their selectiveness of males. Mm -hmm. Males, like, will pick anything, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And yeah. th they're more likely, you know what, ah, fuck it, I'm not, forget this rule and just fuck it. But whereas women are like, he's great, but they're always looking for the reason not to with this guy. So, you know, there are some differences here, you know? Yeah, like I agree to some extent for sure. Um, but I mean, I can't deny like the bio biological perspective on that for sure. But um, shouldn't we be at the point of development and evolvement uh, this this at this point, um, that this shouldn't be like the the main reason for how we act. I think it like takes like, around two hundred thousand years for for a creature to change its mm. traits. At least us, like for us to change in the way we are. So I think technology is advancing so fast mm -hmm. to where we. I mean, it's only been like a th couple thousand years. Mm -hmm. You know true, what I mean? True. True. So it's. I think it's too early, in my opinion, for us to get to that point yet. I mean, I don't want to deny. Like, I mean, there are, there should be, and there are difference between um, women and men for sure. I don't want to deny them. I don't want to eradicate them. Um, but I think, like, at this point uh, of life, it should not always just rely on the biological perspective, because we evolved that much. Like, I mean. I mean, it's the meaning of life to reproduct for sure, but is it? Do you want to know? Oh, do you want to hear my theory on this? Yeah, tell me. Um, my favorite book, one of my favorite books, it's my second favorite book. My first is Shantaram. My second favorite book is written by a guy called Viktor Frankl. Uh, it's called Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. Have you read this book? No. Have, have I told you about this book? No. Okay. But I, I'll write it down and then maybe I'll read it. Okay, so it's basically about this psychologist mm -hmm. or therapist or I forget which one. Um, He's a Jew, and it's uh, Germany, and uh, it's the Second World War, and he's in a train, he's been thrown into a concentration camp. And uh, he has this book that he's been working on, it's gone, it's burnt away, and he, he's thrown in this concentration camp, and he's like, fuck, where's my meaning now? I just had this thing now, I don't know what to do with my life. And he starts examining people. Like, you know what, I'll turn this, I'll learn from this, I'll try mm -hmm. and learn from this experience. So he starts looking at people, and everyone's getting the same amount of food. Everyone, like most of the guys he's with, are their bodies are going through the same thing. But yet, some of them, are, their bodies survive, but others they don't. They die. He's like, okay, what's the difference? Hmm. Oh shit! I figured it out. So let's look at uh, Exhibit A. There's this one guy who's been who's convinced the war's gonna end in two months, and he's like really excited and he's doing great and he's mm. cheering everyone up. He's a bit positive. Then that day comes. The war doesn't end. Mm -hmm. He drops dead immediately, like in a couple hours, when he, as he realizes this shit, his immunity system just plummages and his body's gone. Another guy, let's say, um, went into the concentration camp 
and he believes in God and he thought he had like this mini conversation with God he said God listen uh, every all the suffering that I'm gonna receive now I want to make a deal with you I want you to, to remove that off my daughter you know or I think it was his I don't remember but like someone he loves who's not in the concentration mm-hmm. camp mm-hmm. move all that from her life and put it on to me and I'll gladly go through this and he survived he go through this and he's okay so the meaning of life is simply this justifying the suffering mm-hmm. because life is a gift but it may not be wrapped in a ribbon but it's still a gift and uh, the good things are worth all the terrible things that happen they, they outweigh the, all the terrible shit by miles by like loads so as long as you find a way to justify your suffering mm-hmm. life is extremely meaningful and beautiful in that sense yeah i like that one i should read it it's a really good book and he's like you would expect him to like really hate the, the nazis in germany no 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 he's very very kind and very uh, open-minded and he talks a lot about all the good things the soldiers in the concentration camps would do and it's very fair it's mm-hmm. immense it's amazing mm-hmm. how fair he is how he took himself he took all the ego out of his perspective to write that book seems like an extraordinary person yeah somehow a really cool book it's mm-hmm. amazing uh really recommend it by the way have you heard of uh, this thing called the gender pay gap Yeah, for sure. <laughs> What's your take on it? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's it's proven that there is this gender pay gap. And, um, like, I have to say I never experienced it. Like, the, the jobs I had, um, I was always, like, paid equal to, to men. Um, but since I'm more, like, in the NGO sector, I think there's it's different. Um, But you can't deny that I think uh, like I I don't come here with the numbers and stuff. So <laughs> people should do their research on uh, on their own. And maybe I should have prepared it. But um, I think it's maybe a third or something. The difference. It's uh, 77 cents on the dollar. So women earn 77 cents on yeah. the male dollar, for example. And tell me, why is that? Okay. I mean, they do like the same work. Let me th- yeah so let me tell you this is interesting you just said that so it's actually what they, how this study this initial study was conducted I haven't looked at the further studies to be honest but the way it initially is conducted there's a big problem with it so it takes into consideration all the female salaries versus all the male salaries mm-hmm. I just care. that's it that's it that's how they've come to that conclusion mm-hmm. it doesn't take into consideration um, Judith has the same job as Ramsey and how much what's the difference there it doesn't mm-hmm. do that Mm-hmm. But it, what what it doesn't account for is that most uh, of the really risky jobs, like you saw in the documentary, are done by men, mm-hmm. and those really risky jobs, which are very dangerous, pay for that risk. So as a result, uh, you know what I mean. And since you have more men doing really really dangerous shit, you have that uh, discrepancy in this mm-hmm. in the numbers. Okay, that's interesting. But then I ask you, why don't women do these jobs? For example, like um, my flatmate in, mm. in Germany, he's an electrician. Right. And um, I asked him, like, um, he's doing his apprenticeship again in Germany now. To, so, And I asked him, like, in your class, is there any women? <laughs> and he told me, like, no, not in the whole school of electricians. There's no women. And I'm really like, I don't know why, because it's not... It's not a job which is like really difficult or you have to like, I don't know, um, heavy weights or something you could not do with the like physically. So one aspect is like we looked at Titanic, men are more disposable. Mm-hmm. You know, fuck it, he's a guy. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Who is he? He's not no one yet. He's still young. You know, we'll send him off to war or whatever. Like um, 99, 98 to 99% of uh, war deaths are men. You know what I mean? Mm. And even like uh, these kinds of jobs. It's because uh, women don't really have to do that kind of stuff. Um, there's no need. Whereas, like, let's say a guy, he gets married, he has a family. Fuck, whatever job is around, I'm going to do. And, like, when I used to live in places like Switzerland, those jobs were already a bit dangerous enough. But here, I'll be walking by and I'm watching a mosque being built. Like a guy repairing something. And he's all the way on the top and he's standing on this thin little plank with no wood, uh, with, with no, like, ropes or anything. This plank where he's balancing mm-hmm. on. And he's like wearing slippers. And he's like hammering something. And I'm like, I'm like, man, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, like, just relax, man. I do this every day, you know. So, and he has he has to bring that money, you know. Like he has to feed his family. He has to do a lot of shit. So that's why more men do it because they kind of have to. And we're in Europe. It's like men are more drawn, in my opinion, to that kind of work, mm-hmm. to that kind of risky 
stuff. It's fun. It's exciting. And in some in other countries, it's because the, you know they're desperate, and uh, they're more likely to find jobs in that space. Mm -hmm. So that's my theory on it. Another really interesting thing uh, is, do you know that eighty five percent of all consumer purchases are done by women? No, I didn't. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like if you look at companies, for example, like Audi, BMW, Nestle, and Coca Cola. Like those four businesses I just named, all did dealings with the Nazis, with the Nazi regime. They did business with the Nazi regime. And now today, like if you go and look at their corporate websites, women empowerment, you know, we believe mm. in equality. It kind of makes me suspect that a lot of companies are saying these kinds of things just to appeal to their consumers and demographic, which is why mm -hmm. we see this big shift because it ma it's making money since, like I said, the majority of their customers are women. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? It's kind of like... Not greenwashing, but female washing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really interesting term. I don't for know. It. What do you think about like um, women's quota? Yeah, I think forced diversity is a very dangerous thing, because like now people want to make everything balanced. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, sorry, there's not enough black people in this com mm -hmm. company. Uh, we need to fire some white people. To that's kind of that's like opposite. That we've gone back to racism essentially when we're doing mm -hmm. that. When like we're hiring people based off a race quota, that is racist. Mm. you know or a gender quota whatever that's sexist like uh that's li like you were saying there's not a lot of bricklayers who are women mm -hmm. or electricians or mechanics or what you know does that mean we need to force women into this industry no hey there are some sometimes there are things that men prefer to do more than women should we force all boys to play with barbies absolutely not no you no. know i also have mixed feelings about that like I, I have to make up my mind on that. But still, like the point, one point is uh, to, to be pro on this is like, if we don't have that, then nothing will change. Hmm. Sometimes you have to go a bit f too far to achieve change. You know what I mean? That's an argument. That's an argument some people do make. But there's a risk to that is we could go over. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's we, true. It can always backfire. And why do you think we need to force it to change? You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, for example, think to end racism, uh, we need to be very serious about the topic. No one's allowed to make a joke about anything. We all have to be very sensitive. We all have to correct everyone we hear, say something that's slightly wrong, and we have to be kind of anal about everything. Like this is, a, I think, a very wrong idea. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, when I've made friends with people who are from other races or other cultures, we were very, we were in a situation where we had to joke around. We, mm -hmm. you know, and we were laughing and we didn't take each other too seriously to where we could make that connection. But if I feel there's some sort of wall between me mm -hmm. and him because of society say I can't make this kind of joke or I have to be like this around this guy or whatever, it kind of forces me to take myself to be very serious around this mm -hmm. indiv individual. Instead of taking it easy and laughing. I get that point. Um, but I think it's more maybe about the perspective of the, I call it now, victim. So mm. how does he, she feel about it? I mean, if it's a friend and you know this person, like then he or she, like you, you know how he would take it. Right. But if you like encounter like a, a person you know don't know like a stranger and like you say something which could be really insulting you don't know how the person would take it like for example a racist joke or something i think it's more about empathy if i meet someone who's like really sensitive off the bat and I, i don't want to be this person's friend personally mm -hmm. or have any kind of relationship because um i like people who humble me i like mm -hmm. people who make fun of me who test my ego mm -hmm. i mean i recently had like a like a little issue with a friend of mine you know i think I, th i thought he went too far but then i was like very thankful to him and i was really appreciative that mm -hmm. like oh no he pushed me to this to this uh, level if he was really sensitive he wouldn't have done that mm -hmm. so there's something i really value in not being afraid to hurt people's feelings because mm -hmm. sometimes we need our feelings to be hurt and yeah. we, need, we need to wake up if i know automatically that i can joke and laugh with everyone it's going to make me more likely to be friends with everyone yeah. and And I think it just says something about your character when you can take a joke and you can laugh at yourself, which is why I think it's so. This mm -hmm. whole victim mentality is so dangerous. Another thing is that's really dangerous. Dangerous about it is, it removes accountability. You know, when you mm -hmm. instead of looking inwards, for example, when I'm on a motorcycle, I don't care if someone is driving and hits me right in the back and cripples me. I'll always find a way to look at it. Hmm. I always consider it to be my fault. Because I should have looking at, been looking at my mirrors, being, been aware of my surroundings, and been careful enough to not be in that situation. 
and I'll always be mm. blaming myself more than that crazy person. Because something people always tell you when you're on a motorcycle, it's not that we're not worried about you and you're driving, we're about the people around you. Mm -hmm. But as a motorcyclist, I always tell myself, it's my job to be aware of those people mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. So I think accountability, which is something I think we're losing nowadays as a result of this whole victim thing. Yeah, maybe. But there's also a point, I don't want to drop it, uh, the thought. Um, I think it's about communication and which comes also to to the loop back to masculinity. Mm. Mas oh my God, this word. Masculinity. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we, like, if you can talk open about, mm. like, your feelings, how you receive th things, it would help you. It's, like, about communication. And, um, yeah, like, if a person can tell you that she or he feels like uncomfortable with what you're saying then you could understand it and then you could talk about it and then like you don't have this problem and then you maybe also don't feel too like this person is way too sensitive but like you get his or her perspective it's about communication yeah if they say like hey man i don't like that joke try not to make it anymore it hurts me a bit uh, and you should be a bit considerate of that, you know, and you should, you know, if you want to ask him why and understand, then you'll have more sympathy once mm -hmm. you get that understanding. Mm -hmm. Right, there are some things, but like off the bat, if someone doesn't know and say, says this joke to me, mm -hmm. I'm not going to like, hey, you've offended me now. You know, I'm like, yeah, he doesn't true. know, I, he doesn't know like my story or whatever. I'll, maybe I'll tell him some time and he'll understand. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, communication is so vital to all, to all relationships with a lot of people. You know, like if someone is doing th something, they're not unaware that they're hurting you. It's mm -hmm. important to let them know. Yeah, true. Even if someone is doing something nice, like I love telling people, I was having this discussion with a friend yesterday. I was thanking him for something nice he did. And I, he's my best friend. And he was like, why are you thanking me, man? What the fuck? Like, I don't care. I like to tell you that I'm very appreciative because it's very kind of what you're doing to me today. And, you know, and he was making fun of me. You shouldn't, like, this is just standard, but... Yeah, but that shows something about our communication style. Like that's something so huge if you just appreciate it. Like, right. Because yeah. what's really weird about communication is I can have an idea, but I could never 100% give you the exact thing I see in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, have lang I have tools like language, drawing, all kinds of things to put that idea in your head, but I can never purely do it. Well, like we, we don't have telepathy yet to where we can do yeah, that. Yeah, true. So I think it's cool when you can come close. But yeah. I mean, friendship should, is based on, to a certain degree, uh, the topics that you both enjoy mm -hmm. talking about. But at the same time, you should both be able to disagree, mm -hmm. have a little argument, and not like, hey, I hate you now because you don't like what I... Oh, yeah, you, it's not your favorite movie? We're not friends anymore. That's like childishness. That's true. You know? But now you see adults doing this, and this is the mm -hmm. standard. Yeah, that's true. Another thing is, um, do you know what the most depressed demographic is in the United States? Like, the most... The demographic that takes the most antidepressants. Tell me. Can you? Okay. <laughs> it's women, uh, white women of the age of 45. It doesn't say, we don't know if they're married or not. It just, that's the number. So what's the reason? There, there's no, we don't no, have, a, don't. we don't have evidence okay. to, to clearly state this mm -hmm. is the reason X, Y, Z. But it's a theory I have. Mm -hmm. And it's not, also some people have this theory. For example, any 20 year old, any female 20 year old who she doesn't have to look like a 10 out of 10, uh, but if she downloads a dating app, mm -hmm. I mean, she will have thousands of matches. And, it, mm -hmm. <laughs> what, and like she opens Instagram and all these things. Uh, she looks at all these videos of these women saying, you know, you go girl, you deserve better, you deserve everything. And her seeing thousands of matches on her phone, it's going to change. It's going to make women have unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that effect basically... Um, makes them think that nothing is good enough when it comes to relationships or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, Because they're always expecting the most marvelous thing. Like everyone, like men and women are, when they open social media, they're comparing themselves. Yeah, for to sure. someone's best 15 minutes in his whole year. Mm -hmm. And that's all they see. Oh, it's going to make your life look like shit. Mm -hmm. if you True. Put, you know? Yeah. So I think whatever point they get to in that situation, when they're 45 years old and they're reflecting and they're, and they're not being grateful for what they do have, so... Um, you know, and maybe that's an effect for not uh, for not having real having realistic expectations when they're younger, you know. So as a result, they're not satisfied, and they think that they're missing something. Mm -hmm. And that's my theory on it. It's crazy, and like they lived half of their life probably, so they maybe reflect. But why is it the women and not the men? Right, the men are a lot lower, and the women a lot higher. Oh. Remember how I said the thing earlier? 
my theory on how like the value of mm-hmm. a boy and a girl when they're born and how like woman she's born here right the guy he has to slowly build himself up and even if the woman does everything right to preserve her value time is not on her side but if we look at a relationship aspect wise what a man is looking for is like fertility is one of the big things mm-hmm. you know just biologically from mm-hmm. an instinctual yeah, sure. animal mind so that's decreasing and so she, her options like when she was 20 and she was having fun like all the guys were like hey what's your hey, hey, hey. It's like, oh, fuck off <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah <know>. true <laughs> and when she gets older she's like hey not as many guys are so it kind of makes her think that there's something wrong with her mm-hmm. because she's not looking at it from a logical perspective she's looking at it from this social media you deserve everything girl you know do you and all like to this extreme empowerment level to where she forgets about that, that hey that's just a part of life but maybe it's also like i mean the the, the, the study um i think it's like a recent one and maybe it's like women around 45 years now so like let's go back in time so most of them would have been at home mm. raising their children maybe not um chasing their i don't know higher perspective in uh, i don't know like work like work achievements or something and maybe they feel like they feel like missing out something and like the mm. their husbands or partners um they went to go to work and achieve like everything they want besides having a family maybe it's also that point yeah the kids are grown up and then And what is next? Right. Yeah. Comparative thought, I think, is a big aspect mm. to it. Like I said, that's why I love being grateful for what I do have. Ultimately, uh, women decide who gets sex, uh, but men decide who gets the commitment. You know, who are they going to be loyal to and who gets uh, who gets married in that sense? You know, like, if we look at, like, the sex discrepancy between men and women, it's crazy. Like, it's insane. I don't actually remember the numbers or have them written down, but... I, f- I stumbled off, off this really funny study. I forget the name of the study, but just type in monkey prostitution study and you'll find it mm-hmm. on Google. But uh, basically uh, what they did was they tried to teach a group of apes uh, the value of a token. Like they just f- made like some token and they taught yeah. them the value of money. Oh, okay. So the apes could do things to earn and they could like buy things, like exchange really? the tokens for bananas or whatever. Yeah. And... <laughs> you know, a lot of people say um, prostitution is the oldest profession on the planet. Yeah, I know that. So uh, what happened was a female uh, ape realized like, hey, I could just exchange sex for, for tokens. And thus the first female ape prostitute was born from this study by accident. So the the female ape did that? Yeah. That's crazy. She was like exchanging sex in exchange for tokens. Wow. Yeah, pretty like mind blowing. It is. It is. <laughs> it is maybe some kind of power women could always like they always had been able to use because they are like maybe like physically inferior and stuff and that's something they could use so it makes sense that this ape uses <laughs> <laughs> this to uh to to kill, collect money to earn money. But by the way, uh, uh, What do you think is a man's greatest fear? The man's greatest fear. Oh my God, you ask questions. <laughs> to fail. Wow, I did not consider that. Like to fail, to fail in becoming valuable and yeah, to fail like in general, like. To be honest, in that sense, no, because men have to get accustomed to fear in order that they want to keep going up. Mm. That's not they get desensitized to failure. I mean, how? Like every time you like a girl, you have to go, hey, I, you know, I have to go do something about it. And then huh, fuck off, <laughs> creep, get out of here, <laughs> you know. So men, in a sense, like when they have to become something, they have to go through a shit ton mm-hmm. of failure. Mm-hmm. So True. they have to learn to deal with it. You know what I mean? So in a sense, they hey, that's part of life. Um, you know, that's that happens on everyone. So, you know, like, for example, in my opinion, I would never go to like a girl for relationship advice. Mm mm-hmm. Not because um, I think a woman has less knowledge, but the intention of a woman who's my friend is going to be to make me feel good at the end of the mm-hmm. conversation. Whereas I go to a guy and I tell him what happened with a girl, he's going to be like, listen, man, what the fuck did you do? Why did you say it? He's going to say the really the stuff I don't want to hear that might even anger me. Hey, man, don't, you know, 
But if I go to a girl, she's going to say something just to make me feel better because she's compassionate. She's being compassionate to me. and But I'm not going to get the, the, the shit I may need, you mm. know, from like a father figure or discipline. You know, I'm not going to get, hey, man, what, why did you say that to her? Are you crazy? You know, I'm not saying every guy knows anything about, like, you know, most guys probably don't have a clue. But uh, I just think something to take into consideration. <laughs> I... Mm, I might not give you like the advice, but maybe I would rather, and that's also a type of communication, rather ask you some questions so you could like reflect and you have find your own it. solution. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like how therapists yeah. do that. But would you be willing to say something that would be really like hurtful just to, because you, you know what I mean? You, I would not be hurtful. I would try to say exactly. it like in an empathic way, like, right. but just like, I think as you like uh, got to know me, I'm rather a direct person. <laughs> um, but like, I would not like to hurt you, you know. Sure. I mean, in the end of the day, when we care about someone and we're telling them something that we think is true for their benefit, our intention is not to hurt them, but we are willing to accept mm. to damage that relationship because we care about that person enough mm -hmm. to where we think we know the answer to where we think they need to hear this answer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's I think what got, what friends are for. Yeah, you know, sure. like, so I think, you know, you shouldn't be afraid. But do you want to hear my theory on what, what men's biggest fear is? Tell me. In my opinion, the greatest, worst thing that can happen to any man is marrying a woman, having kids with her, and then later down the line, you've, you've been raising these children, you find out they are not yours. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's why men are so afraid of, like, the promiscuity aspect from mm -hmm. women. You know, that's why they really care about like loyalty and mm -hmm. that's why there's this big obsession with virginity because it has it, there is some sort of connection there you know and a lot of sex workers who retire they report having great difficulty not in having sex or whatever with, with men but like finding a man that's okay with that and yeah, wants to take it to marriage I can relate to that because like it's something they don't have any control on it and yeah but still it's about trust I mean If you have a, like a woman, like a wife or partner, you would 100% trust in, then like there's, is this fear still there? I mean. Hmm. 100% trust. I think. You can, can you have 100% trust in a person? That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question to ask, Judith. Huh. I think no. You can mm -hmm. always have. I was having this discussion with a friend today and he was telling me how uh, he trusts someone. He, tells, he was telling me that, look, it's always 99%. It's all, and there's always that 1% for me. In case anything happens, I can accept that, hey, that's a part of life. Mm -hmm. that everything comes to an end, whatever, this, that, or the other. And I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. So, and we have to generalize here. I mean, when you look at someone whose job was to give you sex for money, that was their job, so it's so desensitized to that person. You know, how can you be sure, you know, it's going to maybe maybe there are exceptions to the rule, but it's going to be more riskier mm -hmm. from that perspective, you know. So like there's this really funny story <laughs> of this guy who's like this dating coach. But uh, yeah, he was giving advice on to men <laughs> on how to find the woman and stuff. And like he would bring his wife to like demonstrate to people like this is how I met her and all that. And he didn't know this, but she used to be a prostitute before he married her. Mm -hmm. And while they were married, she would just go and disappear and come back. And she was prostituting herself just because she missed, you know, she doing it. she liked doing it. Yeah. And he found out and he went like, I mean, isn't that crazy? It is for sure. <laughs> and and to, to what kind of guy this happens to, like the guy who was telling people how to, I, I found that to be a hilarious story when I heard it. It's crazy. But like what happened then to? He, he like broke up with her because he told like off the bat, he made that. He told her that I'm not cool with this. Yeah. Like, this is the kind of stuff I expect from a woman. Mm -hmm. so I think it's a great question, by the way. People yeah. should ask on first dates. One of the questions I asked you, you know, <laughs> what, what do you bring to the table? It really makes you understand the other person. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if a girl tells me nothing, you know, I'm, I am I am, I am, am the greatest, like, I deserve, you know. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this person is a bit um, arrogant. Yeah, true. Or a guy tells you, oh, well, I'm rich. That's it. He doesn't say any of the qualities I mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm. You know, I mean, look at Bill Gates. You know, he has all the money in the world, but he still got divorced. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you gotta. There's a lot of things you might be missing in life, and yeah, in the end of the day, it's really beautiful. Life is amazing, and people are amazing, and they have great ideas. And hey, don't be afraid to listen. And 
try not to try not to get too hurt try and control your ego humble yourself it's okay we all lose we all you know look stupid now and then and with that being said good luck mr rape signing off (laughs) 